maintaining clear, healthy arteries, preventing or even reducing atherosclerosis plaque is crucial for heart health and for your longevity. While no single food can magically drain plaque or something, a heart-healthy diet can significantly slow down your plaque buildup and even promote better artery function, hence reduce your all-cause mortality risk significantly. Below, I will highlight five science-backed foods backed by randomized controlled trials or scientifically very strong and hard evidence that improve risk factors of your lipids, of inflammation or arterial flexibility. Each of these foods or food groups I will mention here contribute nutrients that fight atherosclerosis indirectly by improving blood lipids, reducing calcification or decreasing inflammation. So let's Let's dive in and I can tell you one thing, fat is not the enemy and you will be surprised about some of these foods I'm mentioning. It's cheap and it's powerful. Let's start with the least surprising one, extra virgin olive oil. You already heard about it. Polyphenol packed healthy fats are extremely powerful. Extra virgin olive oil is a cornerstone of the clinical Mediterranean diet, which is rich in heart healthy monounsaturated fats, not that saturated fats unhealthy, we are coming to that later, but very rich in monounsaturated fatty acids and that is very healthy as well. And antioxidant rich polyphenols. Extra virgin olive oil benefits for arteries are supported by robust clinical trials. In the landmark pre-dimed trial, a Mediterranean diet with plenty of extra virgin olive oil lowered heart attacks or strokes or cardiovascular deaths by about 30% compared to a low-fat diet. Olive oil's high polyphenol content helps to prevent LDL cholesterol from oxidizing. LDL cholesterol itself is not the enemy. You just don't want it to oxidize. And it actually also raises HDL cholesterol, which is a good thing, of course. In a randomized controlled trial, people consuming high phenolic olive oil had significantly lower oxidized LDL and high higher HDL levels than those using a low phenolic oil. So definitely look out for that when you are choosing. These antioxidants and healthy fats reduce inflammation and improve endothelial function. Small tip, use extra virgin olive oil as your go-to oil for salads, sorting, drizzling over vegetables or your meat or anything. Just don't heat it too much, right? Number two, fatty fish. Maybe that also doesn't come with the biggest surprise, but here we have to be careful. I am personally using very small fish usually, so maybe salmon, mackerels, sardines. I am not really liking to use the big fish like tuna which can accumulate more heavy metals. So omega-3 rich seafood is quite important for that. Oily fish or fatty fish like salmon abundant in omega-3 fatty acids like EPA and DHA that reduce triglycerides and support arterial health are very important. Eating fatty fish a few times a week is a proven strategy for heart health. Omega-3 from fish oil lowers triglycerides reduce inflammation, the biggest body's enemy, and may stabilize your plaque. In the very famous DART trial, men who had survived a heart attack, so post the heart attack, were advised to eat about two to three servings of fatty fish weekly after two years. Their all-cause mortality was 29% lower than those not giving the fish advice. Quite interesting, right? This suggests that omega-3 rich fish can literally be life-saving or life-extending. Multiple studies and meta-analysis show regular fish intake is associated with fewer cardiac events and slower progression of heart disease. Mechanistically, omega-3 fatty acids help make blood less sticky, so it's anti-thrombotic, lower blood triglyceride levels, and may actually even modestly raise your HDL. They can reduce arterial inflammation, so aim for at least two servings a week of some fish, salmon, sardines, mackerel or trout, salmon with his skin on, sardine with his skin on. That is at least what I'm doing. They provide 
provide you with vitamin D, selenium, and other very, very important nutrients for your health in general as well. For those who don't eat fish, well, a quality fish oil can be a good alternative. They oxidize often, so you definitely need a very good supplier. Just be careful about that. Eating the whole food is, in my opinion, always the best. Number three, I exited my carnivore diet. I am introducing a lot to also support my microbiome is fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, and natto. I am personally focusing on sauerkraut and kimchi, but natto is very powerful as well, at least based on the clinical data. Fermented vegetables like sauerkraut, which is fermented cabbage, it has to be raw, harbor probiotic bacteria and bioactive compounds that benefit your metabolism. Including fermented foods may help your heart by improving your gut microbiome and producing vitamins like vitamin K2. For example, kimchi, a spicy fermented cabbage from South Korea, similar to sauerkraut, has shown lipid-improving effects on human trials. Fermented foods provide probiotic lactic acid bacteria, lactobacillus and so on, that can bind bile acids, reducing your cholesterol levels, your lipid levels, I should say, because cholesterol in general is not your enemy, of course, and produce metabolites that reduce your inflammation. And that is an enemy, I can tell you for sure. And other benefits, traditional fermented foods like natto, which is fermented soybeans and not a friend of soybeans, but fermented soybeans seem to be quite healthy, are the richest source of of vitamin K2 in the world, which helps prevent arterial calcification. Natto also contains natokinase, an enzyme that may aid blood flow by breaking down fibrin clots. Quite interesting, right? Well, let's go into the next one, and that is very much related to it. Before we mention number five, let's go to number four first. Vitamin K2-rich foods, natto H cheese also, and grass-fed dairy are artery calcification blockers. You might be surprised. Cheese with calcium, with cholesterol, grass-fed dairy, like grass-fed butter. How can that be helpful, right? You've been fooled maybe. Well, let's talk about it. Natto is fermented soybeans, for example. It's extremely rich in vitamin K2, which activates actually proteins that keep calcium out of the arteries. Vitamin K2 might be an uncertain sung hero for arterial help. It helps activate matrix GLA protein, a vessel protector factor that prevents calcium deposition in artery walls. Populations with higher vitamin K2 intakes have much lower rates of heart disease. Notably, the Rotterdam study found that those people consuming the most vitamin K2 from foods like aged cheese and natto had 57% lower risk of dying so a 57% lower risk of all-cause mortality, but also of dying from heart disease and significantly less aortic calcification compared to those with lowest K2 intake. Importantly, vitamin K1, which is not from an animal source, K2 from an animal source, K1 from uh, plant sources, so from leafy greens and so on, did not show this benefit. Vitamin K2 seems to be the key for your arteries, and that is Animal based. In clinical trials, vitamin K2 supplementation has shown a promise of a three year randomized controlled trial in postmenopausal women, and that showed that daily vitamin K2 intake from MK7 supplements showed the progression of arterial stiffness, slowed the progression of arterial stiffness, especially in those with stiff arteries to begin with, compared to the placebo group. To get K2 from foods, incorporate natto for for example, but also hard cheese like Parmesan cheese or Pecorino Parmigiano Reggiano and so on. If you are for adventures, right, then you can use even natto kinasa or natto, fermented soybeans. Sticky, a little bit strange, right? Otherwise, just stick to the cheese. You can enjoy aged cheese like Gouda, Edam, Jalsberg, but I really like to focus on the raw ones like Parmigiano Reggiano or like the Pecorino. And they contain MK8, MK9 forms, and that is, of course, very good for your heart health. Even pasteurized egg yolks and grass-fed dairy 
provide K2. So by ensuring adequate vitamin K2 intake, you support your arteries resilience against calcification, literally helping to keep them pliable and clean. And now let's go to the last one. Number five is grass-fed lamb and other pasture-raised meats. Surprising, right? Well, they are very dense in omega-3 and very nutrient-dense protein within great aminogram. Well, grass-fed lamb is richer in omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants like vitamin E and CLA than grain-fed meat, making it heart-friendly a choice of red meat. Red meat often gets a bad reputation for heart health, but grass-fed varieties are a different breed for sure. When lambs or cattle are pasture-raised on grass, their meat develops a markedly improved fatty acid profile much higher in omega-3 polyunsaturated fats and lower in pro-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids compared to grain fat meat. In fact, a recent trial in 2025, just this year, showed that people who ate grass-fed, grass-finished lamb three times a week for four weeks significantly boosted their blood omega-3 levels, whereas those eating grain-finished lamb did not not do that. Notably, the grass-fed groups, cholesterol and blood pressure didn't worsen at all despite regular red meat consumption. Interesting, right? That is something the mainstream media is not really telling you. Grass-fed lamb is also packed with conjugated lineolic acid, CLA, and antioxidant fatty acid that in animal studies has shown anti-atherosclerotic effects. Moreover, grass-fed meats contain more vitamin K2 and vitamin E. Choosing grass-fed lamb or beef in moderation can thus provide quality protein and cardioprotective fats. So the bottom line, you can't literally scrub plug from your arteries, of course, with a single food, but you can eat in a way that fosters healthier, more pliable arteries. Emphasize foods like olive oil, fatty fish, fermented vegetables, vitamin K2 rich foods, and uh, grass fat, grass finished proteins, fatty or lean. These will improve your lipids, reduce your infl inflammation, and provide vitamins, key micronutrients that protect against calcification. All are backed by solid evidence, including randomized control trials showing reductions in cardiovascular risk factors. Remember the combination of these foods as part of an overall balanced diet is most powerful, paired with other lifestyle habits, not smoking, regular exercise, stress management, sleeping enough, seven to nine hours, hanging out with your friends, praying, right? These things, the whole picture makes it whole. You will give yourself the best shot at unclotting your arteries and keeping your heart and vessels robust for years to come. If you found this helpful, share this video with your friends, leave your thoughts down below and we are going to see each other very soon at the next one of MM Health and as always, guys, as always, bye, bye.